All right. So are we doing gay love? I guess so. Okay. You're listening to That Gets My Goat. Hi, everybody. This is Big Anklevich. And this is Rish Outfield. And this is That Gets My Goat. That's right. After uh, our last controversial episode about the Ghostbusters got such a great response. <laughs> I thought, well, let's do another pseudo-controversial episode. Okay. That sounds interesting. <laughs> I don't know if it's controversial. I mean, you know, sometimes you find manufactured controversy. Like, uh, there was the Where's Ray campaign for uh, The Force Awakens. That was just manufactured controversy. You know, I could fill an entire shelf with the amount of Ray merchandise that I own, let alone that I have bought. But there were people that wanted to read stuff into it, you know, misogyny or something. Misandry. Misanthropy. Okay. Mistakes. All right. Miscongeniality. There we go. Miss photogenic. All right. Miss July. <laughs> anyway, sorry. I just, uh, I, I thought it would be interesting to talk about it's sort of two different but somewhat related separate but equal issues. Oh no, we're not, <laughs> not going to go there, guys. Um, I don't know. I guess I'll just put it out there. I wanted to talk about Queen Elsa of Arendelle, and I wanted to talk about Finn and Poe Dameron from The Force Awakens. So, is Finn going to get a, a last name in the next episode? Do you think? Or will he always be last nameless? I think he'll always be last nameless, but Ray probably has a last name, and they just haven't revealed it to us. Yeah, Ray Kenobi, probably. She'll probably get a last name. Anyhow, um... No, her name will be... What is it? Plo Koon? <laughs> She'll be Ray Coon. Ooh. <laughs> She's Plo Koon's illegitimate daughter. <laughs> With Kit Fisto. <laughs> yeah, she could be Ray Fisto. <laughs> Ray Coon Fisto. All right, guys, I'm sorry about this. <laughs> sort of thing happens late at night. Um, Okay, so let's talk a little bit about Elsa. And we talked about it a couple of years ago when we did our uh, our Frozen episode of the, the, the song Let It Go becoming this anthem and the character of Elsa being adopted by a certain segment of the population as saying that she is us. She represents us. She represents a very specific thing. Whereas I, I imagine she was intended to represent any person that feels like they don't belong or any person who's ever, you know, been shunned or, you know, misjudged or locked their little sister up for years in a room with no food or light. Um, but yeah, the, 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 the lesbian community sort of in, embraced Elsa as their own. And the, you know, the song, Let It Go, once you see it, you're just like, oh, wow, this really is a coming out anthem. This is, uh, you know. The... Yeah, she's putting all those things from that she was told when she was younger behind her and just going to be who she, who she is, is. Yeah. what she was born as. You know, I, I don't imagine that that was the filmmaker's intention, but but I could be wrong. I, I yeah. Do you think it was just the lesbian community, or was the LGP? Oh, sorry, the LGBTQ. Holy crap! Well, there's a few more. There there are many letters in the homo LG... rainbow. <laughs> sorry, there are many colors in the homo rainbow. LGBTQIA, I think, is the. Uh... What is a? Asexual. Okay. Uh, well, there's also Anna falls in love with this dude, Hans, Prince Hans. Is that something right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, she falls in love and it's the traditional Disney romance. And there's this fantastic song that they sing. And, and Elsa calls it into question from the very beginning and just, you know, thinks that her sister is foolish. And uh, then ultimately the end of the movie Anna is shown to be foolish that this, this man is a, a monster. He's a douche. Yeah. But Elsa never falls for any of that stuff. I think she's suspicious of this guy the first time they're alone together. And, uh, 
the movie ends and, and Anna finds a better man in Kristoff, but Elsa does not. Elsa never finds a man. Elsa doesn't need a man. That's right. And so I think you can read stuff into that if you'd like. And then at the same time, I wanted to talk about The Force Awakens, the, for lack of a better word, the bromance between Poe Dameron and Finn, uh, who, you know, is the stormtrooper turned resistance fighter. He's a big deal in the resistance. <laughs> okay, big deal. You got bigger problems. Women always find out the truth. That one was embraced by a segment of the community in much the same way that people were reading a romance, a gay romance between Finn and Poe. And uh, the, what both of them have in common is that people really, really, the, the shippers, as they, they say, really want this to be. The shippers? Shippers are fans that really want somebody to get together with somebody else. Oh, okay. Interesting. I've never heard that term before. Do you know what it comes from? I don't know. It probably is from Star Trek fandom. I, I <laughs> like everything. Like everything. Like Mary Sue and all the but, rest. But, I mean, th th there are certain romances. Like you and I were talking about Fitzsimmons on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. today. And that's one of those that's designed, almost from the beginning that those characters were introduced, for audiences to just long for those two to get together. Mm -hmm. And it's up to the writers to come up with organic ways to keep them apart so that the audience goes, Oh no, no. Because uh, then becomes emotionally invested yeah. in, in just l hoping that they get together. Well, I felt that way a lot. I mean, the things that they did to them, you know, like Fitz finally confesses his love to Simmons and then they get dumped in the ocean and he has to basically, uh, drown, drown himself to save her. And, uh, he's messed up in his, in his mind because of it. And, and, you know, they have to deal with all that for a whole nother season. And then they finally get past it. And they're like, okay, well, let's go on a date. Oh, my gosh, yeah. That's going to be great. And then Simmons gets eaten by the obelisk thing. And you're just like, oh, man, what do they got against these guys? They're the worst. And see, then in the third season, they revealed it, that Gemma Simmons is alive. But while she was on this other side of the uh, uh, galaxy... She found a man, and they had a relationship. And so she can't commit to Fitz now because yeah, she, she has this other man. And it's it's cruel, but I understand why they do it. Because when it works, it really works. I remember there being a couple of moments on Firefly where you're just like, oh, for the love of... Kiss her, man! Oh, dude! You just... I, I wanted Mal and Inara to get together really bad. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, if they had kept that going for two or three years... Whew. It might have gotten old, but it it would have been a really heart-rending, I'm sure, at many points. Like, the part where they... In, in Heart of Gold, where uh, Mal decides to uh, be with her friend or whatever, and she's like, yeah, no, I don't, that's fine. Yeah, you should. I think you really should, and all that stuff. And so he does... And then she's so messed up about it that she goes out into the hall and just, like, cries. And you're just like, oh, my gosh. That's such a real moment for her, though. Yeah. Because she does put on this tough front or whatever. And, yeah, it's like, why not? And she's she maneuvers Mal into this situation. You know, the woman is clearly interested. So she basically gives Mal permission to go do this thing. And then... We see her despair at that he would do this. That hurts, man. And yeah, I guess knowing Joss Whedon, he would have done that for the next two seasons. <laughs> Anyhow, I guess the point I was trying to make was that there are people that see into the Poe Dameron Finn friendship, bromance, camaraderie, brief moment together, a sexual tension. And, oh, they so want these guys to get together. They so want... The filmmakers to have those two get together. And what I really wanted to talk about was that. Was it's Disney sort of in both camps. There is a hashtag, a Twitter hashtag called Give Elsa a Girlfriend that, you know, people always pass on that, you know, for Frozen 2, they really, really want Elsa to have a female love interest for Disney to say, yep, 
you were right. And then, yeah, there's a big push for episode eight. Let's have uh, Finn and Poe get together. Let's, let's, let's be progressive. Let's open the door to this in the most public way possible. You know, a sequel to the biggest movie ever made. But, you know, not adjusted for inflation. And, uh, <laughs> anyhow, that, the discussion I want to have with you is, is this going to happen? And then why not? <laughs> because, sorry guys, there's one answer, but and we can discuss the why not, and it, I'm gonna have you to know, play devil's advocate a tiny bit in this. Not that's uh, that's what I, I I always you know that's kind of my slogan, if you will, is why not? <laughs> oh, you're a bad person. You used my words against me, Spirit. <clears throat> Are there no prisons? So, Frozen Two is in. Pre-production. I don't think it's they've recorded or anything like that. There's probably not even a script. It does have a release date, I believe, but it's not till like 2020, something like that. But episode eight is shooting right now. But there was enough time after Force Awakens came out for them to have to make their decision on this. And and I don't know if Lucasfilm can just do whatever they want and Disney's like yay, or if they have to answer to their Disney overlords. But um, I think it's highly unlikely that Elsa is going to have a female love interest in Frozen 2 and almost as unlikely that there will be any gay love between Finn and and Yeah, it's unfortunate, but I think I think the real thing that is going to drive that decision is just the money that they stand to possibly lose if they anger people and there's still, you know, things are changing the times they are a changing, but they're not to the tipping point really yet. And, uh, I think there's at least enough people who be completely outraged if something like this happens to where they'll be like, no, we're never seeing another Disney movie. I don't care how good it looks. So, I think that that's what will weigh into their decision. And there will come a day when it's just not seen as a big deal. And then they'll be like, yeah, okay. But I don't see Disney being leaders in that area. They're not the ones that are going to go out there and take that risk. There's going to have to be a bunch of other people who do that first until it becomes a safe thing to do before they try that. Because, yeah, I mean, Disney... I mean, I don't know about Frozen, but they paid a lot of money to get Star Wars. And uh, they, I think, expect to get a lot of money out of Star Wars. You know, the last thing they're going to do is try shooting themselves in the foot with something like that. Well, let's talk about Frozen for a minute, uh, if that's okay. Sure. When did you first hear this rumbling about Elsa? And is it inherent in the story or are we is it subtext that we're reading into it yeah see i saw it as subtext when i because i saw it in i mean inherent yes but inherent subtext not overtly yes she's a lesbian she was an allegory for a lesbian from what i could see the same way like the x-men could be considered that these are people that are born different Everybody hates them because they're different and, you know, they're feared and, and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, they could be considered all different, you know, some, uh, they could be an allegory for a minority or an allegory for something else, any other, you know, somebody that's any outsider, you know, I think the, at least the creators of it, you know, I don't know that Stan Lee was thinking, let's make it, uh, outsiders but i'm willing to bet that chris claremont at least had that going on in his head where he's like you know these people are going to be feared and they're going to be the outsiders and you know people will hold their purses tighter when they are walking nearby that kind of stuff uh, i think that was definitely done on purpose and i think that's definitely i mean basically <laughs> elsa is an x-man she is Iceman, except for that Iceman can't make living snowmen. He can only make ice. You know, she has a magic power. She has a, a, a mutant ability that makes people afraid of her. She's a witch. 
She turned me into a newt. A newt? Oh, got better. But um, that, like that song, definitely seems to me as I mean, and then this is me. I'm not. I know few people, very few people that are gay. Uh, I know my share, but you know, close friends. I don't know that I have enough. But all the same, I still totally saw that. You know, I didn't miss it, and I'm sure most people probably did. So they heard that song and said, "Yeah, okay, I get where this is going." All right. Because it seems really, I don't know, it seems obvious to me that that's what the song's about. I don't know that what they were trying to say, that, that her character is that way, though, you know what I'm saying? Just, she had something else that was an allegory or a whatever for being a gay person. So I don't know that her sexuality was any part of it at all. Uh, which is, I think... The other reason why they probably won't go there in Frozen 2, because she's gay in a different way. I don't know if that, if that can be said or not, but yeah. She's an ice maker. Okay. They're similar in that Star Wars is aimed at families, not just aging fanboys, but people with kids and kids and kids at heart. And Frozen was aimed at mostly young girls, but, you know, kids mm -hmm. as well. And then they both have just massive merchandising campaigns yeah. Uh, where, yeah, you don't want to offend potential buyers of your toys and dolls and shirts and et cetera, et cetera. But, for example, J.J. Abrams has mentioned that, you know, there, there are gay people in the Star Wars universe and we are going to explore that in future movies. And I don't know if he said that just to shut people up, since he's not <laughs> doing this next movie. Yeah, it's I was going like, to say, is he some kind of overarching producer guy? He should be, isn't, but as far as I know, no, he just walked away. Isn't he done? So, Maybe Kathleen Kennedy told him they were going to do that. And that's fine, yeah. I, the, the problem with Force Awakens, and I'm closer to Force Awakens than I am to Frozen, is that I just I don't see it there. What I do see is an interest in Ray from Finn. He asks her if she's got a boyfriend and you can say, well, he asks if she's got a cute boyfriend because he's gay. I'm like, okay, <laughs> I guess so. But I mean, Han Solo picks up on the fact that he's interested in Ray, uh -huh. I think. And, uh, and, and maybe you can interpret it in different ways. And because I'm attracted to Ray, I see Finn being attracted to Ray too. I, I I think that's possible. Yeah, and maybe that's why gay people think that he's attracted to Poe because they're attracted to Poe, and so they assume. And there's, I mean, there's a few spots, like for some reason, while Poe's flying around in his X-wing, Finn stops and just watches him fly, and he says, "Wow, now that's a pilot." <laughs> but you I know? don't think he could have known that that was Poe. And they share that, you know, right before the battle starts or whatever, they kind of like, I don't know, look at each other in kind of a <laughs> weird way. Like they stop and gaze into each other's eyes for a It's not just like, hey, well, oh yeah, kick some ass, buddy, or whatever. Huh. It's more like, yes, I may never see you again, <laughs> so... Okay, so you're seeing something there I don't that, know. There's... that I guess I don't see. Maybe, and... maybe Finn is bi... Maybe that's what we got going on here. And it's going to be a, a, you know, a three-way relationship. A lot of people want that to happen. I saw a picture yesterday where Ray and Finn had their arms around each other. And then <laughs> Poe had his arm around Finn. And she said, this is my boyfriend, Finn, and his boyfriend, Poe. <laughs> and it was cute. Yes, I made the mistake of doing an image search for this episode. I thought, oh, I'll come up with something good. It was a mistake because I was at work when I did this image search. And, uh, yeah, there are people that have taken this real seriously. <laughs> Very far. Guys. But I discovered, and, and I don't think that this is the source of it, but there's some evidence for it in an interview that Oscar Isaac did on Ellen's show, where Ellen said, you know, everybody sit down. We're going to ask him the question. And she asked him the question, and he said... That that's how he acted. It he he said I when I played that, yeah, the whole time I played it that Poe was interested in Finn romantically, and I was just like, oh, 
okay, well, then maybe there is some evidence there because I just didn't see it in the times I saw Force Awakens. Yeah, I don't know. I'm talking about the stuff that you saw with your image search, I remember seeing a a GIF image that somebody put on Facebook where there's two dudes dressed up in uh, cosplay outfits. One of them's Finn and the other one's Poe. And they're standing next to you. And there's like a bunch of people. I want to say there's a bunch of people It was around. at a Comic-Con. These were cosplayers. That are like clapping in the background and they like stand there and they look at each other and then they like move in to kiss each other and, and then the gift refreshes over. and starts over so you never actually see him get there so uh, it's just what are they called shippers shippers it's are just people a, that really really want so and so to get together yeah, it's just to torture the shippers i guess <laughs> to never let them get their uh hopes see their hopes realized even from cosplayers I don't know how much you and I have talked about it, but uh, Star Wars has always been almost childlike in ha- in its sexuality. It's it's been so chaste that it's like fairy tale level chaste. You know yeah. what I mean? There's yeah. the, there's never any anything beyond a kiss in in any of those movies, except for I guess in the third prequel. I think they were in bed together because they were married. I don't, huh? I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I, I would never ever see that movie scene. again. But you don't remember that he has a dream that Padme is going to die oh. in childbirth, and he wakes up okay, and she's well, yeah. there in the bed. And... Okay, but they were just sleeping. It's not like they were even like laying in bed and like talking and being like, "Oh, I hate I'm sand. so excited for our new baby." Oh, and I hate sand. <laughs> okay, but the point I was trying to make was that the the sexuality in the Star Wars universe is really, really restrained. Yeah. And so that's one of my reasons that now, sorry guys, this is never going to happen. But also just, yeah, the people, even if it was a minority of people, and I don't think it would be, that would be upset, those people would be so vocal and make such a stink that, yeah, Lucasfilm would just be wise to avoid that altogether and say, yeah, I'm sorry. Like, like Big said, we'll let somebody else do it. Maybe somebody over on Star Trek can do this. <laughs> Brian Fuller is starting a new Star Trek series. I'm go. sure it'll have lots and lots of, of people that the, the, the fans can get upset about. I, I imagine that uh, there will be some kind of romantic subplot in Episode Eight, but, you know, I don't know if it'll be Finn and, and Ray or if they'll introduce some new character that wants to pull Ray away. Because my impression is that Ray is going to be the central character in this uh, this new trilogy. I would hope so. I mean, she was obviously the main one in this first one, and it would be weird for them to switch away from that. And, uh, yeah, Poe was supposed to die. You know, he died in earlier versions of that script. And so I, I think I remember reading an interview with, is Ryan Johnson the guy that's doing episode eight? Where he said, yeah, once they unkilled Poe, we had to do a new draft of our script and, and try and find a, a way to... You know, to to mm-hmm. rewrite the story so that uh, something to do that Poe would be significant, and I mean that yeah, there's certainly that way they could make him significant. <laughs> Again, the the sexuality of characters, with the exception of like Han Solo and Jabba the Hutt, rarely come up. So that if there was something explicit, it would just come out of nowhere. You'd be like, "Holy cow, what?" It's easier to say, "Well, we we don't know." Or they could do that awful thing from the prequels and say, well, you know, Jedi can't, <laughs> can't get together. Jedi it's, are monks. So. Yeah, it's better if they don't breed so that eventually they all die out. Yeah, because as you can see, if they do breed, they got a really high chance of having very high force susceptible children. So we wouldn't want that. Okay, so let me take it a step further, though, and let's say that in Frozen 2, Disney gives Elsa a male love interest. Let's say that that happens. I'd say that there's probably a 40% chance of that happening. Okay. Because somebody at Disney could have an agenda and say, hey, let's nip this in the bud, guys, and let's just give her a boyfriend, and that will stop all of the speculation and all the... Religious groups that are wanting to boycott Frozen 2 and, and all that stuff. And we can just say that the right guy never came along, but now they, now he did. 
Well, I mean, she was locked in her room her whole freaking life, so... Uh, no, the, Anna how, was locked in her room. Elsa could do whatever the F she wanted. Sorry, I still have issues about that. Okay, so tell me what happens if that happens. Um, I'm sure you'll hear a lot of complaints. There will be a lot of people who will be very upset with that. And I think, unfortunately for those people, Disney will just be like, look, I don't, I don't know what you guys were seeing here. But that's that's not the way it was. I know you guys got your hopes up and stuff, but it wasn't. It, sorry, I mean I hate to disappoint you guys, and we're we're on your side and all that, but it was never going to go that way. And I don't know why. You know, I, that's what I assume will happen is they'll just you know come out and just be like, yeah, it, it was never that. It was never going to be that. I don't know why you. I mean, I, I know you shippers wanted this, but. I'm sorry, but we were it was never gonna be that, and I think that's probably all you're gonna get out of Disney. And uh, you know, I don't think that their characters will change otherwise. I think that, you know, Elsa will still be very strong character and one that does what she wants kind of a thing. And you you might get a lot of people, you know, you'll get Twitter hashtag campaigns and you might get a petition on moveon.org or something like that and you may even get people who are just like oh fuck disney i'm never going to see another one of their movies can't believe that they just turned my gay character straight like that that is so wrong and i guess you might get a f you know a lot of people can get behind things like that there's a lot of people that uh even though they're not gay, you know, are still willing to stand up for for those that need allies. So you may get enough people that, I don't know what Disney would do. I mean, once the movie's made, the movie's made, and they can't unmake it or change it or whatever. I mean, I see that kind of stuff happening, basically. Similar stuff to what you get with a lot of other similar issues that happen you know it's not like they can take it to the supreme court or something like that or, and, and do anything i mean i guess they could organize a boycott and say you know let's boycott disney because they did this but uh how many people will hear the excuse of like hey it was never supposed to be that i'm i'm sorry but that's that we were never going there and be like oh yeah this was just somebody's fantasy gone too far. Do you agree, though, that Disney would be better off just not addressing that and having Elsa be the virgin queen kind of thing where she just, yeah, they they, they never introduce it. They're not going to have a, a romance either way just to, to let people that think that she's straight continue to believe that she's straight and people that think that she's gay continue to believe that she's gay when in the actuality she's asexual. That would probably be wise. I mean, I mean that's I have, what I would do, but I, I, I don't know what I have no do. idea where they were, where they would go with this. I mean, I have no idea where they can go with the story. It's a mistake to make a Frozen Why two. is there a Frozen And two? they did Frozen Fever, and I found that to be satisfying. I was like, oh, yeah, there you go. There you got the sequel to Frozen. In the same way that they made a Tangled short yeah. that showed him getting married and stuff. And I was just like, oh, good, guys. There you go. And now you don't have to make Tangled 2. We got to see him live happily. I like that. Thanks a lot, guys. But I guess Frozen made so much more than yeah. Tangled did. That. Yeah, there's that. It's Well, I mean, merchandising continues for Frozen all these years later. I and mean, it's, it's like Cars, you know. They're making more Cars movies because they're still selling a damn ton of toys. And they're not going to stop giving people incentives to buy those toys. <laughs> but I look as much forward to Frozen 2 as I do to Cars 3. It's just it's another movie that doesn't need to be made. It's right. a cash grab, I guess. Right. Whereas I'm thrilled that the Star Wars movies are continuing and that we're getting an I mean it's almost fair to say a glut of Star Wars movies. Uh well at the time that we're recording this they just announced who's playing Han Solo in the Han Solo movie and uh you know, Rogue One is set to come out soon, and Episode Eight is filming. And I just said, "Wow!" You know, the an embarrassment of riches. You got Star Wars Rebels on TV, and it's finished its second season, gearing up for a third. Yeah, I've been told I need to watch that, but I so far have no way to see it. 
It's not a streamable thing. For that I know of. I haven't. It's it's like the Expanse. I don't know where I can find it. Well, somebody said you could just wa- uh, buy the Expanse for fairly cheap. So. Yeah, I've but, considered that. But yeah, that's, sorry. Let's not talk about the Expanse. Uh, um, the the Star Wars thing. <sighs> I imagine that there will be a love interest for Ray. But what would happen if we saw Poe in episode eight with his arm around some dude? No open mouth kissing and no humping or anything like that. But just clearly this guy has got some dude that he's more than friends with. And that's all. And they're no, they don't draw attention to it. You just see it. Would the shit hit the fan or would that be okay? I see. I. I don't want people to feel like they're being betrayed and I don't want people to feel like they're underserved because there's a lot of people that already feel underserved. Right. And there's still a stigma on homosexuality that's it's ugly, but it's part of our culture. It's hard to get away from. Yeah, it takes a long time. I mean, that's one of the things that they talk about is just, you know, the people who have the the homophobic. I was going to say racist, but that doesn't work. Is homophobic the right equivalent to the word racist towards the homophobic view is that what you're saying right okay people that have those kind of attitudes they get old they die out and the younger people have different attitudes and things change and that's kind of the speed that that change goes you know and everybody wants speed or wants things to change faster so that their own life will be better because their life is you know what they've got they don't get to be around 50 years from now when all the haters die out because they also have died out. But, uh, you know, that's the kind of the speed of the way things change. I think that you could definitely have that. And I don't think that there would be much of an uproar at all uh, that Poe is with somebody that, you know, we just hadn't met yet in the first movie or something like that. And I don't know why that would be more acceptable. Maybe it's just because it would be more of a background thing and less of a foreground thing. Well, see, I, I'm, I'm also that nasty, awful, hateful majority. And all stories are for me. I've had people tell me that. It was like, all movies are made for you, so you don't understand. And, and they're, pro- they're right. But Finn is black and Ray is white. And just a few years ago, it would be unthinkable that those two could have a romance. But I think if in 2017 Finn and Ray kiss, nobody is going to care. Yeah. The, the color is not going to enter into it at all. Well, there will be a few, you but th- a, a very small amount. I remember there's this old guy once that was talking to my dad, and he was so upset about the cover of Sports Illustrated because it had Bo Jackson and I can't remember who the woman was, but a, a white woman was posed with Bo Jackson in, you know, they were, you know, Bo had no shirt on and this woman was, I don't know, wearing a swimsuit or a sports bra or something like that. And this guy was like, I can't believe that Sports Illustrated would promote interracial marriage like this. And I was just like, wow. Oh my gosh, what a friggin' piece of work. And my dad was just like, uh huh, okay, um, I think my dad was just trying to walk the line of, you know, not agreeing with him too much while, uh, you know, not turning his back on him and walking away and flipping him the bird. Because my, you know, my dad wasn't like that, but. But your dad's an old man. He is. This guy was older than my dad, I think, probably by 10 years. it's, It's not even our parents' generation that had a problem with it, but the generation previous. Is, is, that, is that fair to say? My dad is older than probably your dad. Well, my dad's an old man, dude. Okay. So he's 40. He's slightly older than your dad then. But yeah, I think our parents' generation, I think racism was going, you know, it, it was starting to make headways and going away with them. And with us, with our generation. See, our parents are older than baby boomers, though. Our parents aren't baby boomers. They're the tail end of whatever the heck was before baby boomers. And I'm not going to call them the greatest generation, because that's not what they were called. 
They were called something else, and you can't change the name of a generation as they're about to die. It's too late. <laughs> and I, unfortunately, what was their generation? I don't even know anymore. They, I don't know. There was uh, the depression was the big event that they were all measured by. I, I don't think it was even the war. It was the depression was the thing that they had survived. Our, our grandparents' generation and uh, right. How do we get in this? Oh, but yeah, I just, I, I guess maybe in my childhood, that was a big thing still, you know, the whole guess who's coming to dinner and, <laughs> and all that stuff. And to hear Will Smith talk, it's still going on. And he said, and I remember him saying it because I was like, really? He said that they, he will not be given a white love interest in all these movies. Like they'll give me a black chick. They'll give me a Latino chick. That, you know, it's all that's okay, but ooh, no, you know, dare to have me kiss a white woman. And I was like, but you're Will Smith. Wasn't. Would anybody care? What? Really? I don't know if that's true or not, but I'm trying to think of a movie where he kisses a white woman. Wasn't his love interest a white woman? Did that count as a I love interest? I don't think that that counts. She was Did married never... to Jason Bateman and. <sighs> but they had like this weird destined. They had this hawk man with hawk girl from Flash thing where oh, like, that don't remind me we're that. destined sucked. to be together kind of a thing. Although they didn't actually get there, or did they? I don't remember. Did I Jason don't know. Bateman get left behind? You and I have talked about that a bunch that of movie. times because Hancock was two movies, but I've forgotten almost all of it. And sometimes people bring it up and be like, oh, that was a huge movie. I don't think so. By the amount that people talk about it, I don't think it was a huge movie. Yeah. It was a weird movie, yeah. The whole suddenly it's a completely different movie right at the halfway point, more or less, was hard to... That was a mistake. Yeah, the first half was really strong, and I wish they had stuck with that. But why am I talking about it? Oh, just because he said that, and I disagreed with it. I was like, holy cow, you're Will Smith, man. You, 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 you're not a black guy. You're Will Smith. You're <laughs> every man. You know what I mean? You're the coolest guy in the room, no matter what color the other guys are. But then I couldn't think of a movie where he had a, a white love interest. And, dude, I think that if there were a movie and he and Cameron Diaz got it on or he and somebody that's super, super young and popular now got it on, because that's how it usually is, is, you know, the, the they, man is 25 years older than the woman. I don't think anybody would care. Yeah, I, I think that that has mostly, I mean, we talked about Jessica Jones on a recent uh episode here just a little while ago and and yeah that was nick uh, i always want to call him nick cage damn it <laughs> luke cage and jessica jones they got it on and they got it on hard right there for you to watch <laughs> <laughs> sorry marshall <laughs> that's right you're probably listening with your kids dang it um <laughs> should not have put star wars and frozen on the cover i'm sorry <laughs> But yeah, I mean, you, it's going away. That whole interracial thing is not much of a thing anymore. Maybe Will Smith has a different attitude because maybe he experiences it different than we do. I mean, he has to deal with the casting and all that kind of stuff and see that kind of stuff. And I, I don't know. Um, I want to say that I've seen some other examples of that recently as well, but I can't think of them off the top of my head. Jessica Jones is the only one that comes to mind uh, but yes i fully expect there to be some romance with ray and and maybe it'll be finn but i don't think people will care that they look that they have different skin color <sighs> somebody like you said somebody has to as they say throw their hat over the wall and be the first and say i'm gonna do this throw their hat over the wall is that a saying okay maybe not you said that I said that even. What the crap? Where did that come from? I said that you said You it? said, like you said, somebody needs to throw oh, no, their no. hat over the wall. No, but I'm, I'm referring to you saying somebody has to be the one somebody that says, we're going to make this, we're going to do this. Somebody we're needs to, to do grab this. the pickle and turn the flip. It's like, what are these sayings that you're coming up? I've never heard any of them. Okay, yes, but I'm saying I was putting in... Cool dude talk. In California, Rish talk, what you would say. He's like, say, somebody has to throw their hat over the wall, yo, and say, look, we're going to have the princess in our Shrek 15 get it on with the female horse, yo. 
that they will get a little bit of flack for it, but at the same time, that will be seen as a milestone thing. And in the future, people will say, oh, but yeah, but Shrek 15 did it. And then somebody else will be like, yeah, okay, that other movie, did, and Shrek 15 did it. And pretty soon, yeah, it won't be It'll as get big to a, a point where it's no big deal. Yeah, I mean, it's like you're talking about the interracial relationships. I mean, they're, they're I would say, despite what Will Smith says, they're fairly common on TV and uh, in movies as well. Well, like uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., remember, uh, May is married to a black man and May is Asian. And, you know, who cares, right? I, I think there's a lot of that going on on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., isn't there? The only people not getting it on are Fitz and Simmons. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's because they're not uh, an interracial relationship, so... <laughs> By the time you this episode airs, you will have seen Fitz and Simmons make the beast with two backs. So be happy about that. Yes! We get to see them make the beast <laughs> with two backs. Well, It's going to be uncomfortable not, when I watch it with my family. Uh, it's the on-demand. You know, sometimes just, you have to go online to see the deleted scenes. It's, it's that one of those thing. little extra clips that you can watch. Okay. It's like a 15-minute sex scene. We're like, wow! It's Fitz and uh, Simmons' sex tape. You see Fitz walking away as he turns on the camera. It's like, okay, it's rolling. It's rolling. Let's do this. I would watch that in a New York minute, dude. <laughs> um, anyhow, sorry. Uh, should I cut all that stuff out? <laughs> uh, you know, Have I, Marshall call you real fast, I, whether he's listening with his kids or not. I used to be so paranoid. And I, you, uh, well, yeah, that's the kettle calling the pot something. One of us used to be so paranoid about saying things that would be potentially offensive and that. So, that, you know, I'd cut it out and put it at the end, but I don't know. I mean, it's, since this is kind of an iffy topic, of, you know, a potentially incendiary topic anyway, I, I feel like anything we say goes is probably fine. What do yeah, you think? I don't know. It's always weird when you take an incendiary topic like this and put it on our show because we're poking fun at everything, but this is kind of a serious thing, so... When you make jokes, are you asking for it? Okay. Well, are you going to get your ass kicked for making a joke? Or... Okay, well, sorry. Let me bring it down then a step. And something that we never mm, talked... We lovely. did. I did five different Force Awakens episodes. And Big and I did three different Force Awakens episodes. But because, you know, of our various problems, you only heard the last one. But in all of our discussions on the air, we never talked about this one thing. And I'm just going to bring it up. There was a certain segment of the population that read a whole lot into Ray not wanting Finn to hold her hand. And there were people that championed that and were just like, yeah, baby, you know what that means? And I don't think it means what they said that it means. But there, there are things that are probably easier to get away with. In today's day and age, in the same way that, you know, a black man and a, a white woman may be a harder sell than a white man and a black woman. If Ray turned out to be lesbian, I think that would probably offend fewer people than if a male character turned out to be gay. Um, lesbians are still seen as a little bit more acceptable. acceptable. You know what I'm saying? I, and and I, I don't mean to be offensive on that, you know, because everybody who's any minority... You are the worst treated people on earth. I know because, believe it or not, I've been part of a minority. And, oh, they loved to hold up a sign saying, no one is more persecuted than us. Which was just simply not true. A anyway, like, if, uh, let's say that the, the character I don't know the name of, that Felicity Jones plays in Rogue One, let's say that being lesbian is just part of her personality from the first scene. It's just like, yep, that's just... J.J. said they were going to do it. This is what they were talking about. I think that would be more palatable to the masses than if it than is if revealed it in Episode 8 that Luke Skywalker is a homosexual. You know, it's just... Do you agree or disagree? Well, I agree, but probably for a different reason. Well, A, Luke Skywalker feels like because he's been around for 40, 30 years, whatever, that he can't be touched. You can't suddenly reveal something like that. There are people that were hoping that it would be revealed that Luke was homosexual. And and, I, I, and that to me just, it was like, that, but we know Luke. We know that he's right, not. Right. That I think you would get a gigantic outcry. 
as opposed to we find out that Poe and Finn have got a thing, you'll get much less of an outcry than if you revealed that Luke was... Because he's a long-time beloved character. And you know how many people get all upset and they're like, Oh, they're doing this and they're, they're killing my childhood. All those people that complain in that sort of a manner, Oh, they're going to go freaking nuts if it's Luke. Oh, okay, you're talking about Star Wars. You're not talking about turning Thor into a woman or turning Captain America into a black man or any of that stuff. Well, You're talking about Star Wars. Any of that kind of stuff. I mean, the people that freaked out about turning Thor into a woman or turning Captain America into a black man, they'll be much less upset if it's Poe and Finn as opposed to it's Luke Skywalker. Because Luke Skywalker is a long, 40-year-old beloved character, whereas Poe and Finn have been around since Christmas. (laughs) <laughs> you know, and so people aren't, you know, they haven't been collecting Poe and Finn characters since they were eight, you know, action figures. And I think even more so, people would be less upset if it happens that, I don't know, Forrest Whitaker or whoever is gay in that Rogue One show. Because now we're not even talking main Star Wars continuity. We're talking side quill action here. And so... To the same point as they would, like, oh, some guy on Star Wars Rebels. Okay, I don't even watch that, so I don't really care. You can make 50 characters gay in that for all I care. I've never watched one episode, so I don't mind. I don't know. I guess that there's certain things that people think of as sacred cows, and then those that uh, are less so, and I think they're willing to give up the cows that are less sacred. Uh, I don't know if that's fair. Okay, I, 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 <clears throat> but no, I, I mean, that, think that that's the way things are. Yeah, you've got a point that if they introduce a character and from the very beginning, this is a gay character, it's probably going to be more. Gosh, I don't want to say palatable. That's an ugly word. It, but it'll be more accept easy. It'll be easier to accept than if they have a, an established character and they say, and this is something you didn't know about that character. Yeah, I mean, it's like the, I don't know, I don't know how many people have gotten up up in arms over this, but the thing about Dumbledore being I wanted to mention Dumbledore, yeah. Was something that you never, that never actually came up. I mean, you could infer it if you were paying attention enough when you start hearing about his past with that, whatever the other wizard guy's name was. Do you remember what his name was? If I... Strain, I can remember, but no. I... So, well, I don't want you to strain. I've seen what happens when that goes on. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't think we have an aerosol <laughs> to uh, take care of that right now. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that came out. That was revealed afterward. That was kind of like that, where this beloved character, here's something you didn't know about him. Dumbledore is gay. But how but different it... would the experience have been if she had revealed that in, say, the fifth book? In the book instead of uh Instead just of after the afterwards? seventh book is out and then she's like, oh, by the way. Yeah, I think it would have been a much bigger uproar. That's what I was going to say. You know, it wasn't a big uproar because it was never really a part of it. it but was... he's a completely asexual character. Right. He's like Obi-Wan, Ken- old man Obi-Wan Kenobi, you know? It's just... Yeah. So it was, I mean, you don't expect old whatever character to have any sexuality you know once you're beyond i don't know 40 or 50 usually it's like okay this guy's now wise old whoever he's not randy old whoever (laughs) if you're randy then you're like the bad guy you're the gross child stalking old guy (laughs) that's what i'm destined to be (laughs) But yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think it would have been a big thing if after, you know, five books, they've been telling us, oh, and Dumbledore's the greatest and Harry really loves him. And then they'd be like, oh, by the way, he's gay. And then all these people be like, oh, my gosh, as if witchcraft wasn't bad enough. Now it's gay Gay witchcraft. witchcraft. When you put it that way, she was probably right not to ever reveal this if... And I'll, I'll give her the benefit of the doubt. I, I'm willing to believe her when she says that, she, you know, Dumbledore was always intended to be gay. But yeah, there were people that made such a stink about Harry Potter. And, and it's been long enough already that that stuff is seen as absurd. And you just look and you roll your eyes and think about people burning Harry Potter books. And you're just like, wow, <laughs> that's crazy. That, that could never happen in the 21st century. So. And Joe Rowling is just like, as long as they paid for him first. You know why they call her 
named Joe Rowling because she's rolling in it, man. She made so much money off of those freaking books. She earned every dime. Okay, C-3PO. Gay, right? Yeah, gay robots. We, we've known about that for years, right? Did the king of robots? Bye. <laughs> and if there was, <laughs> like, an explicit... A C-3- sex scene with R2-D2? <laughs> that little thing that he puts oh, into the slot do comes don't out? Don't do it. Oh, dude. <laughs> don't say it, man. And it goes... <laughs> But, sorry, when I was a little kid and people would say C-3PO was gay, that would bother me. But that was in the days when gay was a pejorative before it was anything else. Hopefully, it become more enlightened to the point where I'm just like, yeah, you know, C-3PO obviously loves R2 very much. But, <laughs> I don't know, again, I tempted to cut this out. Why, why am I even bringing it up? But, yeah, C-3PO, while gay, is also asexual. Same yeah. as Dumbledore, you know? Sure, he's gay, but Dumbledore's really old, and really old people can't do anything like that anymore. They can't get it up anymore. And Speak for ourselves. C-3PO is the same thing. He's a robot, so he can't... He doesn't You've never seen reproduce. that picture of C-3PO with the giant golden erection? Can we have that be our episode art? <laughs> then at least Marshall won't be listening with his kids. So, you know, that kind of stuff, I suppose, you can totally get away with. But yeah, I don't know. It's I guess it's sad that we're not to the point where it can be totally acceptable. Maybe it's our fault. I don't know. Do you ever think about that? Just thinking? Our fault because we're white males? or No, our fault because we're sitting here thinking, no, you can't do that. You can't get away with that. And so, therefore, those higher up are like... Yeah, I mean, did you talk to that guy? He said there's no way we could get away with that. So it's probably not a good idea to push the envelope just yet. Hmm. Huh. I would be fine with it. I'll have to say I am to the point where I wouldn't care, but I'm afraid that it would be damaging to their business because there are many others that don't feel the same. So you're not a... Are, are you a shipper of Poe and... Uh... And Finn, or? I'm not a shipper as far as that goes. I think it's just because I'm not gay. I'm straight, and I I see myself the same way that it probably anyone sees their selves in a film. And so I, I guess, see more to the Finn likes Ray kind of a thing than the Finn likes Poe side of it. I don't know. I just don't long for And I think it's just... Because that's me. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that's just me being a bigoted asshole. But I I don't long for gay people to get together the same way that I long for straight people to get together. And I think it's just because I'm straight. And so that's what I think of. But maybe I'm just a bad person. I don't know. <laughs> okay, well, I, I, I guess we've talked for an hour about this. I Yeah, I expected a lot more racial slurs and offensive language. On this, I did say bigoted asshole a second ago. Is that good? That's your Twitter handle. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the the I got a lot of followers just because of that. So <laughs> the point I wanted to make was that uh, I don't think that Disney slash Lucasfilm will do this on either of these. But yeah, I don't know that it's because of homophobia, but it's just because of a love for money above it yeah. all. And you wouldn't it's, want to do anything that hurt the bottom line. I mean, business. holy cow, frozen toys make a lot of money a year. And every little girl, I mean, we all know little girls that have an Elsa costume. Yeah. That they don't all. wear for Halloween. They wear it just all the time. All little girls had a Elsa costume. It was pretty much the costume. Like, shoot. Was it just last year when that was the costume? Or was it the year before? Or has it been both? How long has it been since Frozen came out? I can't, I don't have any sense of time anymore. I'm too old for that. Um, Frozen came out, I think, November 2014. So Okay, so it, it would was have after been 15, Halloween. The whole year of November. So last 15. Halloween was when every single kid. Yeah, it was Elsa, and then the other costume, oddly, was Maleficent. There was tons of Maleficents. And it was lots of older people that were Maleficent, like older women, like fully grown. The mom would be dressed as Maleficent, taking her Elsa and Anna daughters out trick-or-treating. That's beautiful. We can cut this out. F*** Maleficent. <laughs> oh, gosh. Disney announced that they're doing a a Cruella de Vil movie 
with Emma Stone as Cruella DeVille. And I read that yesterday and I was like, oh, dude. <laughs> yeah, I don't get that. I mean, I like Maleficent, but not the movie Maleficent. I like Maleficent from Sleeping Beauty. Yeah, She was rad in that movie. She was a cool character, but I'm not really a fan of let's take Maleficent and turn her into the good guy and make Prince Stephen the piece of shit. Okay, well, I'm glad you've come over to my side because I hated that movie. And why do we need to keep doing that? I don't know. I, I, I can't imagine. I mean, obviously, Cruella de Vil is supposed to be a movie like that, right? But can you possibly make Cruella de Vil a sympathetic character? <laughs> can you tell well, us that somehow have, it's Jim Deere? And, wait, we're no, going to have Dalmatians eat her family in the yeah. first scene. And, and then she'll be raped. And by Dalmatians, so it'll be like, hey, you know what? They have it coming. And Dalmatians will do something to her hair that makes it turn that color. It'll there be, you go. It'll she be used to fault. have Emma Stone's hair, and now... Yeah, it used to be, she used to be a redhead, but now she has that weird black and white <laughs> half and half thing. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I know there are people who probably love Maleficent and for the exact same reasons that we don't long for Poe to get it on with Queen Elsa, but it's... Uh, it's it's not any lesbian subtext in that movie. It was just a really bad movie. All right, I'm I'm going to leave you guys now. I, eventually, we'll find out, and hopefully, it'll be no big deal when when JJ's words actually come to fruition on here, and and eventually we will get like an out gay Disney princess or Disney animated character. Um, I just I don't know that Disney is the best person to do it first. Yeah, just depends, I guess, on who takes the reins or something like that. Maybe you just get somebody, you need the right person in charge. Yeah, that's right. Somebody has to be willing to take a bullet for it to say, you know what? I'm making this decision and it's probably going to be unpopular with someone, but I'm making it because I believe in it. And, and Disney is this guy, gigantic company, so they can't do right. They're super, super, super family oriented and so one side feels like they're being excluded and then they have like the gay days at the Disney parks and the other side says, Oh, I told you Disney is bad. And you, when you're that big, you can't win. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. Maybe, uh, we might find the right person to take the bullet. I'll, I, once you're the head of Disney for like a year, I'm sure you got enough money to live on for the rest of your life. So, you know, you could commit career suicide if you wanted to. Just say, you know what? I'm doing this. I don't care. Screw you all. And then you do it. And then if they fire you, fine. You're set for life already. So who cares? You've already owned an island somewhere that you can just go retire to. And you'll be considered a hero by many for the rest of your life. All right, guys. I'm going to leave you with that. One of you has to take the bullet. <laughs> or, as California Rich said, throw your hat over the wall. That's right. That's a big saying in California. <laughs> Such a butthole. <laughs> All right. Uh, I have been Rich Outfield. And I'm Ganklovich. Thanks for listening, everybody. Let it go. <laughs> that Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. Doesn't have to be, but it is. So uh, I had told Austin, uh, maybe I've already told you this, but Austin is this fantastic artist, and I told him, if you would use your art for good rather than evil. I thought I thought you were going to intro the uh, start into the episode by talking about this guy and saying, yeah, you did this. And... I should have, I guess. But, but I said, you know, if you want to make some money, do a, an ultra-realistic, like, Drew Struzan-level painting of Finn and Poe Dameron embracing or, in, you know, in love kind of thing. Kissing. And he's just like, what? Is that a thing? And I was like, wow, it's so weird that you don't know that that's a thing. And so, yes, at work, I did a Google search. <laughs> and it's been done before, guys, in all sorts of shapes and colors from like, you know, way, way, way cartoony sketches all the way to where they've manipulated actual, you know, photographs of these actors and stuff, put them on other bodies and bodies. But uh, I was really surprised that it's that 
prevalent. <laughs> Although I still stand by it. If he had, if he did that, if he dedicated X number of hours to making this art, people would buy it. Yeah. There, there are people that are emotionally invested in that romance. That would be romance. That bromance. Does bromance mean that? No. I don't think so. I think bromance means two guys that have more than a friendship there. They're, yeah. they're like brothers. Not brothers. 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 You tell me. So, like, when I put fake Sean Connery, dawn of bromance, did I interpret that word correctly? Because Superman and fake Sean Connery had more than... <laughs> Because he had Superman look at him and tell him what color underwear he was wearing. <laughs> and it turned out there were none. Okay, yes. Well, I just had to end it on something. No, it just, a bromance is like two guys that are really tight, right? Yeah. Or is there a romantic aspect to it? What is bromance? Mean? I think it's, I th it may have a, like, there's a hint of gayness to it. You know what I mean? There's like, oh, these guys... They're straight, but oh, they're they're only just barely straight. They like each other that much, <laughs> kind of a thing. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, they're more than friends, and sometimes they're kind of a little. They make regular straight people a little uncomfortable at how much more friends they are. Kind of guys that would like give each other a big hug and then even kiss sometimes. Not like kiss, kiss, but like, oh, I love this guy. Oh, you know kiss him on the cheek or something like that. I don't know. Well, it seems to me you'd have to be pretty confident in your masculinity to kiss a dude. Am I wrong? No, yeah, I agree with you. No, I'm just saying, you know, these guys that would grab somebody and I love this guy and kiss him yeah. are or like super confident that they're in their straightness. Yeah, you. I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of like all the football players that are like slapping each other's asses saying good play. Licking scrotums Whap. and stuff. Yeah. I, I don't know where that came from. Nobody ever did. I went, I played football in high school. There wasn't a single ass slap. There wasn't? No. I mean, it was. Oh, you're ruining my fantasy. It was I mean, the late 80s, early getting, 90s, and everybody you was. wet towel snapped, and then they yeah, he's like, oh, I'm sorry, man. I, come here, let me I kiss it. I think everybody was scared to death. Bankovich, come here. It's my turn. I think everybody was scared to death to be accused of being gay or something mm. like that. Instead, it was like, yeah! And you hit each other in the shoulder pads and butt heads uh. together and that kind of crap. But that's gay foreplay, is what that is. <laughs> I mean, that's right out there. <laughs> okay. Slapping a dude on the ass is something, you know, just kind of like a manly handshake. <laughs> but uh, going, oh, come on, come on, rub it. That seems a little bit questionable. Yeah, I think so. Should I have cut all this out? 